Thank you all for coming to the Lightning Talks today. I am Lime Zuddy, the ENS Dow Secretary and Steward, and uh, super glad you all are here. Uh, the style of these Lightning Talks is, uh, we'll talk to six teams today. This is session one of two. The goal is five minutes of presentation, and then five minutes of Q&A for anyone to uh, ask their questions. Uh, we have, these teams are related to ENS in a myriad of ways, uh, but all of them are really quality. Uh, to give you a little bit of history about our first one, in February of 2023, ENS Dow uh, put out a uh, request for people to apply to be treasury managers. ENS looked, they said, we have a lot of ETH and we want somebody to help us manage it. So we received a few applications and ENS Dow voted on selecting Karpatki as the treasury manager. Um, and they've been great partners with us ever since February 2023 where we decided to allocate 32,000 ETH to them. Um, so here today to talk to us is G from Karpaki. Versus you know, the rest of the ENS revenue. 
So we can see that, I think this chart was uh, actually created by Lex, so shout out to him. So 12% of BNS revenue now comes from DeFi returns, and these are only the yields. So now accounting for any mark to market of you know, Ethereum price going up or going down. And we expect this number to increase as we convert more ETH to stablecoin, which is in the investor policy statement. And we also have also up now to increase the size of the endowment, given that there is around 12K ETH uh, sitting idle, not doing anything in the wallet as well as the registrar. So yeah, go we'll look for it, and we really look forward to making sure that ENS can continue to perpetuate and really be self-sustaining at the end of the day. So that's it for me. All right, so we do have five minutes of questions. Uh, if anyone has questions for G and Karpak. Hey, big for your talk. Um, what's the minimum amount of ETH the DAO needs to have in order to use your services? Could you repeat that? What's the minimum amount of ETH the DAO needs to have in order to use? Uh, so we don't have a minimum amount because, like, I think the current DAO is probably like the smallest DAO that we service is Balancer, and they have around less than ten million dollars in um, treasury. But at the same time, because I think for us. Being strategically aligned and us like really believing in the project is super important because at the end of the day we don't see our service as just like a treasure management. We see it as also like we contribute a lot to business development, development activities, a lot of DAOs that we partner with. So we don't have a minimum really case for this. Um, I mean yield is it like only that you can Funds to public public good, like your for example, or your like private funds as well, that you have access to others who normally not have. So, for what we do, we do everything in a non custodial way, so it means that everything has to be on you know public protocols. So, we don't do any um, private, um, whether it be going into C5 or like lending to P2P, so we don't do any of those. So, everything is like not on chain and very transparent to resident DAOs. And I think that's important because when we operate in an environment like DAOs, like it's important to have accountability and transparency. And there's nothing more transparent than on-chain, right? So yeah, that's how we do it for Thank you. Yes. All right, anybody else? Hey, G, I know a lot of folks don't get visibility into the entire Carpacki team that supports the NS DAO. You want to take maybe 30 seconds and just talk about how many people you guys have that actually focus on this on a daily basis, right? It's a big team. Yeah, so within Carpacki, we currently have, I think, slightly less than 60 people, so 50 plus. And then obviously, there's like four of us that focus on the ENS, and we also have the you know, rest of the, uh, what do you call that? Developers and the tech team that supports it, and actually, like our endowment is also in conjunction with Steakhouse. So Steakhouse uh, offers you know, accounting services for the endowment, and we also uh, engage with other service providers like the risk management platforms like Hypergate to run alerts for us, and we also uh, have audit like code reviews for any PRs that we want to pass going forward. Now. So we have the latest um, code review for the latest PR, and we hope to do this um, going forward as well. So like, I guess like for economic management, it's not really just carpet key, but a bunch of like other service providers too. You mentioned there is uh, a lot of uh, I love it uh, in the treasury. Uh, do you do make the same operations? Like, like to stay in uh, with the Native staking. Yeah. So we currently do not do that because uh, I think the most important thing when we are managing endowment is really the liquidity when it comes to like what is our ability to exit our positions if ship blows up. And that is like best uh, done through liquid staking protocols for now because we can exit our funds. And then I think like another like very important thing that we keep track of is like the impact risk of any LSD. Um, Tokens, as well as how many is in the queue, and how many, uh, how much liquidity is available on the secondary market. 
so that we can like manage the things properly. So for now, it's all on um, LST, but not on like uh, we don't see it ourselves. But I think that the risk is greater with LST than native state. The risk is greater with LST than native state. In certain in certain ways, yes, you're right. But I think. It's something that we can definitely do because we do run native staking for GNO for our analysis priority. So if there's demand from you know like the endowment and the ENS community, that's definitely something we can do. A little less flexibility though, right? Right? Yeah. Maybe a little less flexibility, you know, and maintaining the right balance of the pieces to the stake. Oh yeah, that's for sure. question on that uh, is taking point. Uh, so if that happens, it will be custodial, right? Because there is more non-custodial with data state, right? So that, that's also like a blocker, or, or no? We've actually not thought about that, but I think that's a good point. Yeah, in the sense that like, I don't know if there's a way that we can have custody over ETH with it, because yeah, if you're speaking. I'll say that you guys all trust me to say the number 32,000 ETH, right? I mean, if you guys want to give it, well. All right, give it up for G. Thank you. Yeah.